Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video I want to show you Vivian's and mine's bird spotting tower. This is uh, just a storage room where we keep all our outdoor equipment like uh, camouflage nets and sleeping bags and got some emergency food here. <laughs> and we can use this as a, a, a spotting tower for birds because we have our bird feeders just down here and we were just out and uh, filled them up with peanuts and sunflower seeds so uh, there are no birds right now but it usually takes maybe 10 minutes and there will be birds here so first I'm just gonna spend some time in in this bird spotting tower and later I thought I would tell you a little bit more how how I do when I sleep in my car and I just want to keep it simple when I sleep in my car but maybe some of you wonder how how I do it so after I have been here in the bird spotting tower I will go out and show you how I uh, decorate my car when I go out and sleep uh, and later I hope we can go out and do some landscape photography and if you're new to my channel, I think I will run a 30 seconds uh, channel introduction. So if you have seen it before, you can skip ahead. So. My name is Thomas and I'm a landscape photography enthusiast. I live in Sweden and this is my landscape photography channel. I do solo hiking and camping, exploration of new locations. I like to include wildlife and scenes of beautiful nature in my videos. The main focus of the channel is of course landscape photography, which is a big passion of mine. I think you will find my videos to be calm, relaxing and even a source of inspiration for your own photography. I'm very fortunate to have a piece of woodland like this in the backyard. And the bird feeders are maybe six or seven meters away. So I got a really nice setup for this type of photography. I got my Nikon Z7 with a Nikon Z400 4.5 with a 1.4 teleconverter. So with this setup I'm at 560 millimeters. And that's actually really nice for this sort of photography. And the birds are starting to show so let's have a closer look. And I will be hand holding all these shots because I can't really get a tripod in this small window here. It's too narrow. Okay, let's have a closer look. I really love bird spotting. They're, they're so hypnotizing to watch. I could sit there for hours. <laughs> but now I want to talk a, some about um, car camping. And I want to keep it as simple as possible. I'm not going to make a big fuss about it because it's really simple. But I thought maybe you had some doubts about sleeping in the car yourself. It's really easy. So I'm just going to show you how I do it. And let's start with the car. I got a Volvo Cross Country 70. It's a diesel engine with all-wheel drive. And it's a bit elevated up from the ground. And it's got a protective aluminum plate underneath to protect it from the 
I don't know, things on the road. <laughs> and it's by no means an off-road vehicle. It's more for bumpy dirt roads. But it's been really nice for me and the needs that I have. So let's take a look inside where I sleep. There's three main reasons why I chose this car for car camping. Uh, one, it's not a camper van, so it's really stealthy. I can sleep pretty much anywhere and nobody will know that I'm sleeping there. If you have a camper van, I'm pretty sure everyone thinks, <laughs> yeah, they're also gonna camp there. But this is really stealthy with a normal car. I just, I just use these blankets to cover the windows to get some privacy when I'm gonna sleep. And number two, when I put the car seats down, the trunk or boot, if you will, um, gets completely flat. Super nice for sleeping. And also the length of the boot is really nice. I'm 185 long and I can sleep here without bending my knees. Really nice. So I use two mattresses, standard length. I haven't cropped them. <laughs> it gets really, really soft and nice with two mattresses. And usually I got a quilt, but when it gets colder in the winter and in the autumn, I use a sleeping bag, some pillows. And I have been sleeping in the car when it was minus 10 degrees Celsius. And you might think that, wow, that's, you're gonna get really cold in here. But my body heat keeps the temperature above zero inside the car. So when I have food and liquid, you know, water and stuff, uh, it doesn't uh, freeze. So it's really comfortable inside the car, even though it's really cold outside. Okay, so here we are inside the car and obviously I'm sleeping on the right side and on the left side I got some equipment and my food container. And when it comes to food, uh, I tend to eat, when I go out on a photo shoot on a weekend, I tend to eat only cold food like sandwiches, maybe a salad, candy of course. But when I go on longer trips, three, four, five days, I bring my storm kitchen and usually I eat some dried freezed food. And you might have seen that in my other videos that I have some bags with dried freezed food and I just pour hot boiling water on it. Really, really handy. But for weekends, just cold food to keep it simple. And in front of me, I have my entertainment system, as I call it. <laughs> Basically, it's just a flat piece of wood where I keep my phone, my tablet, my two power banks. And I also keep my camera there for easy access. And these two power banks actually keep me going for several days. Um, I charge my tablet and phone, of course, but also my camera batteries through this. I'm not really sure what this is called, but I can charge two batteries at the same time here. So, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else that I missed. So if you have any questions about car camping or so, just leave a comment down below. Okay, so what now? Some landscape photography, maybe? Right now there's really boring conditions outside, but I think I'm gonna get up really early tomorrow morning and go out and see if there's better conditions for landscape photography. So I see you tomorrow. Okay, it's time for some landscape photography. And I got a really lovely tarn here just next to the to the car. And I parked my car in the middle of the road, but ah, there's not gonna be any more people than me here. I'm far off the grid here. It's a really bumpy road. 
no car tracks at all, so I don't think anyone has been there for a really long time. Uh, I don't even have cellular connection with my phone here. <laughs> and when I got out of the car, I could hear a, a black grouse. And it's making the sounds of lecking. And they usually do that in spring, you know, when they gather, the black grouse is gathering on a frozen lake or something, and they do that really <laughs> cool sound and, and they lek. And I can hear one of them making that sound right now. So I didn't really know that they could do that in autumn, I mean. So I got my my camera rigged here with a nice microphone. So let's see if I can pick up the sound. Can you hear it? <laughs> I really, really love that sound. Okay, so I'm gonna sneak down there, try to stay hidden behind some trees and stuff. Maybe I can get a glimpse of it. Okay, let's get going. can't get a visual on him. Maybe he heard me or saw me. So I think he flew off. But okay, <laughs> let's try to focus on some landscape photography. I've promised some landscape photography in this video. So ah, yeah, let's keep going. This tarn, I don't think I can find something to shoot here, but I've studied some maps of the surrounding area. So there's a little lake and another tarn, so I'm gonna go back into my car and go and explore some new locations today. Okay, so I'm at my uh, second location for today, and I think this is gonna be the last location. If I can't find a shot here, I think I will just go home. And uh, when I got here, I just rolled down the window because I saw I don't know if it was a spruce or a pine, a young uh, a tree out on a stone in the water. So I might be grasping for straws here, but I'm gonna go and check it out and see if I can build a nice composition with that little tree on the stone. Well, there it is. <laughs> Should I even try this? I don't know. Uh, I don't really feel optimistic about this one. I'm really grasping for straws here. But, well, maybe in black and white. Maybe have a 10 stop ND filter. So, yeah, let's go closer and have a, have a look. I just realized that in most of my videos, I actually get some nice images. At least I think I get some nice images. But 
I shouldn't take that for granted. Days like today, when I'm struggling, those are also going to happen, so I'm not really sad about this. Okay, so I got my Nikon Z7 and a 70 to 200 lens. So let's see if I can get a nice image of this composition here. And I'm quite high up on the tripod because I want some separation between the, the forest in the background and the spruce that's sticking up from the stone. And I'm gonna screw this filter on, ten stop and the filter. Okay, so this is the composition that I have. And right now I have the ten stop and the filter on, so I've brightened up the the screen as much as I can, so I'm at ISO 4000 and I opened up the aperture as much as possible just to be able to show you on the screen what I'm doing. And uh, you can also see that um, there's a gap between the spruce and the background, which I think is really important for this shot. And there's quite a lot of movement in the water. And hopefully, when I have 15 seconds exposure time, that uh, water surface will get really smooth and make the shot minimalistic. And there's no wind, so even though it's 15 seconds, I think the spruce is going to be sharp. Okay, so what kind of settings do I need for this shot? Let's lower the ISO to 400. And let's see, F11, F10, let's try F10. Because I want sharpness from the spruce all the way to the background. Okay, let's try this shot. 15 seconds, kind of long exposure. I'm hoping for a really minimalistic shot and, well, yeah, I'm just hoping it works. 15 seconds, come on. Okay, there we go. Let's take a look at the preview. Well, actually it doesn't look that bad. Um, I will put it up on screen for you. Did it work as a photograph? <laughs> I'm not so sure, but please leave a comment down below and tell me what you think about it. And this video has been a little bit all over the place, but I hope you enjoyed it. And tune in next week as well. And until then, take care and bye bye.